Welcome to What's She Up To Now, day 1838. Sharon Hornelstrom here. We are talking about how to use EI, which is emotional intelligence, to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Just the, that's the cute little shoes. Now, I've got a really weird filter going today. I don't know why, but Facebook's doing funny things with respect to recording and options of filters. So it was this one or dragons flashing across my face. And actually, I was having a lot of fun with this one the different weird effects it's like you're in a bottle of water or water and things flow and so I better stop and I'm gonna make myself seasick but what do we talk about today today two pieces of content I created this is my spot to document my journey as I grow and build and supersize my businesses online and off uh, since moving from the offline world to the online world in 2017 and what I what I'm working on what I'm liking what I'm not how I get my attention just like so many of us diverted to crazy things that have nothing to do with what it is that I'm doing online like playing with filters okay it's just too much fun anyway today we talked about putting yourself in someone else's shoes just that's the little shoes because I have found since hanging out with my my little granddaughter and my previous granddaughter this got got two granddaughters and one do any day now and so I have three beautiful granddaughters and it's so much fun learning from them because as I watch them learn and grow and observe them it reminds me of so many things that I've forgotten and it, it lets me observe the learning process and how they they process things differently as as children just seeing things for the first time and the curiosity and the excitement versus you know us once we get into our decades and uh, our all the different ex experiences that have impacted us both positively and negatively uh, determine how we will and will not respond in the future and so the annual challenge this year the get your goals annual challenge we're talking about and doing one thing every day to get what it is that we want in life and this month we're focusing on emotions emotional well-being I personally use a nine-part uh, life framework that I set goals and objectives and I kind of plan my life around and I started doing it in 2010 for sure. I did it a little bit on and off prior to that. I learned about the seven different areas and aspects of my life from Tony Robbins like back in the 1980s, the late 1980s, early 1990s, which is a really, really long time. Some of you probably weren't even alive back then, but I learned that, I was exposed to that, and I would use it on and off, but I didn't use it every year all the time until I had a sudden cardiac arrest in 2010 and then I was like hmm what I've been doing the hodgepodge way of living my life and doing what I think I should do not necessarily what feels right for me hasn't been working for me so what am I gonna do now and part of that involved you know changing my relationships getting divorced deciding that I didn't want to do the businesses and things I had been doing and so what was I gonna do and that's part of what led me online and here, you know, made a lot of mistakes, just like in the offline world, but that's how we learn and grow and become the person that we're supposed to be or that we're meant to be. Uh, our idiom today was to put yourself in someone else's shoes. We talked about that. Not sure where it came from. You know, it's been around since my whole life, since the late 1800s, early 1900s. And I wasn't born in the early 1900s. I was born in the mid 19, mid to late 1900s, 1960, as a matter of fact. And it got me thinking about how I have, what, what I think of this idiom, what does it mean, where did it come from, and then what does it mean to me and the people I interact with, and how can I use it to build and grow my business? Well, in a lot of ways. Number one, if we are empathetic, if we put ourselves in other people's shoes, if we try to understand things from their point of view, we become better leaders, better communicators, better visionaries for what it is that we're trying to create in the world. And we help other people to become better versions of themselves as well. So one of the, I, I talked about several examples of how I've done this throughout my life and career and, and some of the advantages to me in my career with respect to corporate America, uh, it was really, really powerful. And I, I don't even know how I decided to do some of the things that I did, but it ended up working out really well. So then I just kept doing it as I moved from job to job and industry to industry. And one of those things was going through a new business when I came to that business and industry as if I were an order for the product or service that we created and that we provided and I would go through the process through each of the different departments I would meet everyone and go through how they handled an order and then when I wanted to improve those processes or look for ways to improve those processes I would actually 
go through the whole system backwards. <coughs> and sometimes I don't, and I don't even know how I thought to do that, but I started to go through things backwards. And when you look through your processes backwards, you're more likely to see them from a different perspective, a different point of view, or your customer's point of view. Because we're when we're building and growing our businesses, we start at the beginning and we're like, this is what we want to create. But that isn't necessarily how our customers experience it. And we want to make sure that they are experiencing it in the way that we want them to experience it, right? So that they get the best possible results from our products and services. Otherwise, why are we in business? So we talked about that. Uh, still feeling under the weather, which is super annoying. Only coughed a couple times in my videos today. Hopefully I won't cough in this one and I might have to actually go get some cough stuff for a change and, and start treating the symptom because it's super annoying, right? When you're talking and all of a sudden <coughs> you're choking. All right. That's all I got today. If I can help in any way, ask. Otherwise, have a fantastic day and I will be with you tomorrow. Bye. With a, with a less fun and annoying filter. Woohoo! Okay, bye.